Folks, what's happening? It's cold and windy out there today. Um, now you're out front, about to pull the batteries out of the golf cart. For the local Trojan dealer, it's gonna see about warranting them for me. So, we have to jump onto that, I guess. Come in, come on. You're watching the Uncle Mike YouTube channel. Stick around. So it's a little windy out. And uh, I got the batteries taken out of this cart. And uh, I'm working with the Trojan rep. Or uh, I guess they're just a dealer. Trying to warranty the batteries in this thing. So. Well, folks. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing some batteries in this golf cart. All the deep cycles are currently on a warranty claim, and I want to use the golf cart. So I got a guy selling, they're pretty much brand new, uh, what do you call it? I think they're O'Reilly's batteries, but it's 412 volts. Now those are just 12 volt batteries, but I'm going to go ahead and link them up and make 48 volts out of four 12 volt batteries. I don't know what he was using them for, uh, but like I said, they're date coded this year. So, or it might be last year since this is the beginning of January. Anyways, go swoop these things up. He's basically giving them away, so it's kind of hard to pass it up. And worst case, if Trojan doesn't want to warranty the batteries that I had in the cart, I've got these. It'll get me around. They'll last. Only thing you might run into is a little bit shorter range. It'll still drive work just fine so go swoop these things up real quick and uh maybe sell them if i get these batteries back from trojan but if not i got me some 12 volts that charger no longer works just tried to use it and nothing happens it doesn't buzz like it didn't really buzz it just kind of mm, old battery charger you know it just kind of hum a little bit like a but no longer works so. So I picked up one of these here, it's a form charger. They make a 36 volt 18 amp or a 48 volt 15 amp. It looks just like that, but on the front of mine it says 48 15, so good deal. Caught her in there. Now next time I run to town, get a uh, something to cover up that hole where the original charger was. I left it in there just in case I ever do come across a new or not new, but get my hands on a factory charger. That way the whole is there to use it. But I added this one here. So now I got that charger, just an extension cord. And then there's that thing getting after it. Batteries are installed. Dogs are out here acting a fool. Well, folks, it's 26 degrees this morning when I woke up. Looks like we can go ice skating. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I bet it's super thin, but we got water or ice. Oh, yeah, that's ice. That's funny. Oh, I broke it right there. She ain't thick enough. This will be thawed out here shortly anyways. It's not loud enough. And I don't want to throw a big rock and break it. But you can kind of hear it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the front and rear tire off this thing because I need new ones. They're junk. Last time I was out, I was climbing a pretty nasty hill, hit a rock, blew out the rear, and then on the way back, 
to the truck. I uh, got a piece of metal in the front tire and uh, lucky I didn't put the bike down, but it did pop in through the rubber and get a hold of that tube. And now for the motor on this car, I've looked at four different motors. All of them have issues and I'm kind of debating on whether I should just get rid of this trance and rebuild the back half of this car to use that LS I already got or what. But enough of that. Let's snatch the tires off this thing real quick. Now doing a front tire, it's very simple. You got your two axle lock nut bolts right there. Two axle lock nut bolts right there. Axle slides through here, over to this side. And axle nut goes right there and then everything gets tightened down and this is just the shaft moving inside the fork so when you put it back together you get it all put together somewhat loose grab that front brake and compress the front tire or front suspension down onto the ground and it'll straighten all the front end up that way it's not in a bind kind of like that or whatever the case may be. Now on the back, it's just as easy. You got an axle nut, your adjusters here, that's your tensioning blocks. So you get the wheel from being all cattywampus, got hash marks. So you just kind of line up both sides when you tighten up the chain. And what you'll do is, is you need to break that jam nut loose. So you'll put a wrench on here to back it up. That way you don't twist the bolt, break it. Break the jam nut loose, run the adjuster in, Get your uh, axle nut pulled off, push it out. This setup is on both sides. Now when you do these rears, they're super easy. You just get yourself your three finger right there, have proper chain tension, and you go ahead, get all of this snug down, your adjusters. I put a little bit of tension on the axle bolt, but do the adjusters first. I put a flat head or a wrench, it doesn't matter, put something in there, rotate the chain, and it. see how my finger picked it up? It puts a lot of tension right here and pulls the, it sucks the axle forward against the adjusters. So that way you can get it nice and tight on your adjusters, torque everything down. Um, you see me torque it there with that crescent wrench. Whatever you're doing is whatever you're doing, so not a big deal. And on the front here, what you wanna do is you wanna get your torque wrench and you wanna go ahead and torque your axle nut. So you'll take this, torque this thing to torque spec and leave these bolts loose because once you get it torqued, you'll go ahead and take and uh, bounce the suspension here on the front end to kind of center up everything here like I was talking about. So we'll go ahead and run this thing on the torque wrench real quick. Now I didn't even get a picture of this thing with the new tires. I got the Tusk T45s on it and uh, I already went and took her for a little ride. <laughs> 